Hi, my name is Leontine Cohen Pauka. I am a licensed tour guide in Israel and France, and I prepared a series of small films about Israel. In every film, I will develop a theme, a subject, an event. The series is called In the Footsteps of. Here is number three In the Footsteps of the First Crusaders. Enjoy! In this movie, you will learn what instigated the Crusaders to come, you will get to know some of the main characters, and you will understand how the Crusaders managed to get their hands on Jerusalem in the summer of 1099. First, some background. We are in the 11th century in Europe. After many centuries of famine, plague and war, Europe has become more stable. Also, an incredible invention has revolutionized the agricultural world. A harness for horses attached to their chests to give them more power to plow the land. And the horseshoe is now made from iron instead of leather. So the horses plow more land, the land provides more food, less young children die from hunger. So, more children reach adult age simply because less children die at a young age. This means there is a strong increase in population. In fact, in a short period, the population doubles in Europe, from 40 million people to 80 million people. Within the European nobility, the land, cities and villages were divided among their offspring. But now there was an increase in offspring. Among the commoners there was also a big increase of people. These people needed to eat, to live in houses and had to be protected. In that time the commoners and the peasants worked for the nobility and would receive in exchange protection and some land that they could cultivate for their own use. So, now we have more people more need for land, more need for food. But there will be not enough of land and food, so it is important to seek for further horizons. Let's go back to the year 1000. Among the Christians, there was hope that Jesus would return in this year. As it didn't happen, people started to look for the reason why he didn't return. One of the reasons that was put forward was that Jerusalem was in the hand of the Muslims. The Muslims indeed had taken Jerusalem in the year 638 and had been there since. Nine years later, in 1009, the Sultan al-Hakim had destroyed the Holy Sepulchre, the church that was built on the spot where, according to tradition, Jesus was crucified buried and had resurrected from. In the meantime, in Europe, there was a political and theological struggle between Christian leaders. This will result in 1054 in what we call the Great Schism, the break between the Western Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox Church. By now, the Catholic popes were in desperate need of justification of their power. In 1095, the Catholic Pope, Urban II, received a letter from the Byzantine Emperor who asked the Pope to gather Western armies and to come and fight the Muslims with him. Urban II organized a religious conference in France. On the last day, the Pope held a speech in which he explained he had received this request of military help from the Byzantine Emperor and he called all the Christians, rich and poor in Europe, to start a war against the Muslims. He promised the sins of the people would be forgiven after they would get hold of the Holy Land. He finished his speech by saying Deus vult, meaning God wills it. There are actually five versions of this speech, so we are not completely sure what he said, but the result was there. After hearing this speech, thousands of people will leave on what we call the Peasant's Crusade. One of their leaders was Peter the Hermit. He was incensed as if he was a saint, 
but he was a short, bold and smelly guy. He did have a talent, he was a charismatic preacher. He traveled on a donkey and his admirers would collect the hair of his donkey and turn this into relics. On their way to the Holy Land, they will slaughter and rob the Jewish communities they encounter. Their violent itinerary will end after they cross the Bosphor River in 1096, where they will be beaten by the Muslims. Peter the Hermit had retreated to search for help. He will actually join another crusade that had left Europe in 1096, that was led by European princes, knights and trained soldiers. All these people, like the people in the Peasants' Crusade, were promised land and prosperity as well as absolution of their sins. The leaders of what we call today the First Crusade were Robert of Normandy, Raymond of Toulouse, Godefra of Bouillon, Tancred, Bohemond and Stephen. They will mostly travel by land and arrive here in 1099. They arrive in a Muslim world that was divided with many different Muslim groups and countries that fought each other. The Crusaders first took the Muslim-found city of Ramleh, then they took the harbour city of Jaffa. When the general of Jerusalem, Iftikar at Dala, which means the proudness of the state, heard the Crusaders were approaching, he poisoned the wells close to Jerusalem and made sure there was no cattle around the city so the Crusaders would have nothing to eat or drink. He repaired the walls of the city and made sure the city had loads of food and water to sit out a long siege. He also expelled the Christians that were living in Jerusalem. He was afraid they would collaborate with the enemy. Only the Muslims and the Jews remained. The general of Jerusalem was confident. He had a strong army. And he was very surprised to see the Christian crusader soldiers starting procession and prayers instead of building up an attack as they arrived in front of Jerusalem on June the 7th, 1099. There were 1200 knights and 10,000 soldiers in the Crusader army. That's a lot of men, but there were not enough of them to surround all of the city. So they concentrated on the north and west side of the city. This was the direction they had come from. The conditions were difficult. The Crusaders had to travel 10 kilometers away to find water. If you have ever been in Jerusalem in the summer, you understand this was a serious problem. They also lacked wood to make ladders and other battle machines. But a small fleet had arrived in the harbor of Jaffa with supplies. And as soon as the ships had discharged their goods, they were dismantled. The wood was brought to Jerusalem. But it was not enough. So the crusaders went 50 kilometers north of Jerusalem to cut trees for their war machines. When they were ready, they fasted for three days, walked around the walls of Jerusalem, climbed up to the Mount of Olives to listen to a speech of Peter the Hermit. Two days later, on July 15, 1099, they started the attack. They attacked from several points at the same time and they filled up the ditches and attached the siege towers to the wall. The Muslims hit back by shooting arrows and by burning the attack towers of the Crusaders with a mix of petrol and sulfur. But the Crusaders protected their towers with animal skin that was soaked in vinegar. And the Crusaders managed to enter the city. They opened the gates so other Crusaders could pour in. The Muslim soldiers fled to the Temple Mount. The general fought from David's citadel. He negotiated his surrender and he was allowed to leave the city escorted by some of his lieutenants. Then the Crusaders finished off with the Muslims who were slaughtered on the Temple Mount. The Jews had fled into their synagogue. 
the crusaders set it to fire and after a few days there were no surviving inhabitants of Jerusalem to be found anywhere in the city. We remember from the beginning of this film that the crusaders came here for religious and economical reasons. So the land that was taken from the locals was distributed among the nobles and their helpers. About 40,000 crusaders remained here and today we can visit medieval fortresses, mills, fortifications and cities that they built. They learned from the medical knowledge of the Jewish doctors of the Muslims and they exported salt, spices, sugar, oil and incense for the churches. Venice, Genova and Pisa will become their main harbors and trade cities. It is only when the Muslims unite that the Crusaders will be beaten. But that's another story for another movie. So, now you know a bit more about this fascinating and tragic part of the history of Israel. Once the country opens again, I can organize an amazing tour around the history of the First Crusaders in Jerusalem and elsewhere throughout the country. I hope you enjoyed this little movie and I will come back with another subject next week. Please feel free to share this movie with anyone you think this might be interesting to. If you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook under the name Private Guide Jerusalem Leontine Cohen. Private Guide Jerusalem Leontine Cohen. A big thank you to my editor Shlomo Cohen. Bye bye and see you next week.